What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today we have to go ahead and have a serious discussion about Modern Warfare 3. A little while ago, I actually put together a video about some of my concerns on how Sledgehammer is going to be going ahead and handling this game, especially leading up to winter break and also after winter break. And sadly, it seems like a lot of those things that I was thinking of are slowly yet surely coming true. And of course, nothing is confirmed, especially after, you know, they return from winter break. We have no clue what they have in store for us. But I can't lie to you guys when I say I am a tad bit worried that things might start getting ignored when it comes to the 6v6 side of things. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, before we go ahead and dive deep, if you do enjoy what you hear today and want to hear some more content revolving around Modern Warfare 3, don't forget to go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell notification button. And last but not least, if you guys are interested in any of my live streams, I do stream pretty much daily. By all means, you can find the link to my kick channel down in the description of this video. That usually goes live, I would say, around 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, like I said a little bit earlier, I did go ahead and put a video out a little while ago discussing my concerns when it comes to Modern Warfare 3. You know, I enjoy the gunplay a ton. I enjoy the gameplay loop. Obviously, skill-based matchmaking is always a factor in COD, and it's very obnoxious, especially for the casual player base. But when it comes to what Sledgehammer did with, you know, their vision here of this game, a lot of community feedback was listened to, and honestly, I think it plays really, really good. But I did have some concerns that Warzone, once it dropped, was going to take all of the priority like it does every single year. And I understand that Raven, you know, works on Warzone, and it's not necessarily all, you know, the main development teams like Sledgehammer, Treyarch, and Infinity Ward that has to put a bunch of work into Warzone after the launch of it. But still, every time around, multiplayer gets ignored, and Warzone gets all the love. It, it just happens time and time and time again, and I was a tad bit worried that once, you know, Warzone dropped from Model for 3, the same cycle is going to go ahead and repeat, and I didn't want it to because, you know, I love what I'm playing here, and I want to see 6v6 thrive, and I want to see 6v6 be the centerpiece of Call of Duty, but, you know, as time goes on... <laughs> I gotta be real, I'm starting to think Warzone is getting all of the love. First and foremost, I just got done checking out a video from Jay God about the perk selection in Warzone. And honestly, you know, me myself personally, I have been playing a bit more Warzone this time around just because I I wanted to make more content than just 6v6 just so I can feel like I have more variety when it comes to this game and more stuff to talk about. But it's still hard for me to branch out because I'm such a 6v6 addict, you know, so I still don't dive that deep into Warzone. So, you know, I don't like to do all my own stuff because usually when it comes to 6v6, I, you know, I look at the weapons that I want to look at. I, will, I look at the perks that I want to look at. You know, I don't really watch too many other videos of custom classes and things to rock because, you know, uh, that's the whole fun of Call of Duty. But when it comes to Warzone, I don't really mind. Like I said, I don't really dabble in it too, too much. So I checked out J God's video. I, I wanted to see what, you know, the perk selection is looking like. And honestly, it looks 10 trillion times better than what we have in Modern Warfare 3 right now. Again, I enjoy the gunplay when it comes to Modern Warfare 3. But we've been saying it time and time and time again that the perk selection, there's no variety. Yeah, there are fun perks, and they did bring back a lot of stuff that we've been asking for, like ghost only working while you're moving and, you know, having dead silence and stuff like that. But we can't lie, you know, especially like when it comes to sneakers, what's any other reason to use something besides covert sneakers, right? All the other ones are practically useless. And that literally goes across the board for the gloves, for, you know, the perk three category, you know, for all the perks, there are like maybe two potential, you know, contenders per each category that I could see pretty much everybody rocking. Nobody has any variety when it comes to their classes. You know what I'm saying? It's just depressing. And then you go over to Warzone and you see tons of variety. You know, I was listening to, like I said, I was listening to J-Guy's video and there's so many different counters and, you know, different ways of going about playing the game. Whereas when you go back over to 6v6, there, there's no counters. <laughs> You know, there, there's not really any, and then they went ahead and added in the assassin vest, which allows you to have ghost on 24-7 without moving, which further takes away from any, you know, counterplay within 6v6. It just makes it even more toxic. That, that, once again, that is the whole fun factor of COD. Yes, gunplay is superb in this game, and that is another, you know, key, you know, thing for a Call of Duty game to have. If it doesn't have fun gunplay, then you might as well just scrap the game altogether. But the perk variety and custom classes is what helps Call of Duty stand out from the rest of the crowd. You know, being able to put together perks and put together builds that differentiate you from the rest of the players and give you a different play style. And there's just no reason to separate yourself from anybody else in this game because everything else is just basically 
garbage. It's going to put you at a massive disadvantage. You know, uh, imagine if the stalker boots actually worked properly. I've been ramming this, ramming this to sledgehammer constantly because I want to see these perks actually put back to their former glory. You know, sleight of hand, stalker, all these different, you know, perks that we have in this game that are fun are not what they used to be back in the day. They're barely noticeable, which leads to people using the same stuff because there is no noticeable difference with any of these perks. But like I was saying, imagine if stalker actually worked like the Model for 3 stalker. It gave you a massive buff in movement speed while you're ADSing. That right there, I, me personally, I don't know about you guys, but I would use that over covert sneakers. I much rather be able to strafe extra fast and have that ability to maneuver around my enemies and engage than being able to sprint 24 7 silently. And, you know, I would probably bounce back and forth depending on the game mode and how I'm feeling and who I'm versing. But right now, in its current place, there is no reason to bounce back and forth. There is no reason to try anything new. You know, there is no reason to, you know, uh, experiment with different play styles because you'll get destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as that. And I'm a tad bit worried that even after Sledgehammer comes back from their winter break, perks just won't get touched upon. I know they are going to hyper-focus bugs and make sure the game is polished and make sure it works properly. And I really do appreciate the work they have already done. This is the most work I've ever seen a development team put in before their holiday break. I'm being dead ass with you. Modern Warfare 2019 up to current date, they all do the bare minimum to 6v6. The game is in a horrible state by the time they leave, and then we have to go all winter break with a busted game. This is the first time where I'm playing this game, and it plays normally. You know, it actually plays pretty darn good for me, and I'm happy that Sledgehammer did that for us. Like, thank you. But at the end of the day, we need that variety. And I'm worried that that's not something that they're going to go ahead and touch upon. Whereas in Warzone, they probably will go more, you know, deeper and in depth when it comes to the perk variety. And I'm not saying, you know, Stalker works better in Warzone or, you know, Slide of Hand works differently in Warzone compared to 6v6 because I'm pretty sure they're the exact same. But the amount of perks in the catalog that they have allow you for that variety. Like, what about the Bone Conduction headset and multiplayer? That should be the counter to the Covert sneakers. Maybe not completely make it so, you know, they're they're as loud as ever like the re like they're basically wearing no you know covert sneakers but maybe you know change it around a little bit give you some cue to know if someone is you know partially running around with that and it's going to be hard to notice it's going to be hard to understand but that's the skill gap you know knowing that you have to actually listen a bit harder but you will be able to hear them if you do decide to put on the bone conduction headset the only use that does is you know it basically reduces all background audio. It doesn't even raise enemies' footsteps who aren't using covert sneakers. It literally just lowers background noise and makes it very easy to, you know, hear anybody who isn't rocking those sneakers. But the point to be made is that it's just not enough variety in the mix. And then you look at the holiday event. The holiday event, I gotta be honest, you know, I, I love the uh, the high-rise holiday makeover. It's really cool. And the shipment holiday makeover, not too shabby. It's not all Christmassy. It's not all like that. But, you know, the Antarctica vibes, you know, are, it's not too shabby. I, I kind of rock with it. But that's really it, man. You know, Warzone gets this whole makeover, this whole massive update, tons of cool features. And then 6v6 gets a mini event that, honestly, is kind of a letdown, especially compared to the rest of the events we've been getting. Like, honestly, out of all the events that we've played so far, this one is kind of the worst, you know? I've been literally, like, wanting to grind. Every, like, and I've been praising Sledgehammer as well. You guys know this. You've been watching me for a while now. You know that I praise Sledgehammer all the time for going ahead and putting together these events that are actually drawing me personally back into the game. Because you guys know I'm not really that much of a, a challenge type of guy. I just like to hop on and, you know, go for some cool looking streaks and play the game and enjoy myself. But for the first time, they're actually getting me back into the game for challenges. Like, I actually want to try to unlock the camos and also go for the weekly challenges for the blueprint parts, you know, the uh, the aftermarket parts and all that stuff. Like, like, applause, obviously a round of applause to Sledgehammer for making an actual, you know fun live service model for a Call of Duty game. Because we have to be real, again, Call of Duty $70, you have to make a real live service model that caters to a full price game, not a free to play model. And this is probably the best one that we've gotten in a long time. But this event, I have no drive. The only thing I wanted to go ahead and grind for was the funny um, the, the funny execution. <laughs> the execution is absolutely hilarious and I love it, but that is hands down the best part of the whole event. I'm not going for the, the, you know, the LMG camo, it's just, I mean, maybe I will, but it's not really something that I feel like I have to do or I feel rushed to do or I feel like I even want in general. Whereas in Warzone, all the stuff that's there is just, 
you know, fun, fun game modes, fun stuff to go for. And that's the free to play portion of the game. Like, again, I, I was worried this was going to happen, but it's slowly happening. Slowly yet surely, it, it's proving me time and time and time again that Warzone is probably going to be a big priority for them compared to the 6v6 side of the things. And also, don't forget that they are going to be indeed adding in, you know, the brand new mode coming January for Modern Warfare 3. That's going to be what? I think it's like a free-for-all with the ray gun introduced. I mean, that's cool. You know, I'm down to play that. I'm down to get that a shot. And I'm excited. Don't get me wrong, and we'll have another map coming into the 6v6 rotation, so of course, yes, there is stuff that we are going to be able to do. But my concern is that Sledgehammer, like I said, is not going to hyper-focus 6v6 anymore. Again, they've done a phenomenal job, but I can't lie, now that Warzone is out, and you know that is literally Call of Duty's bread and butter now. I just have to accept it. It sucks because I grew up watching COD be a 6v6 game. That's where all the hype was. You know, I have to accept that Warzone is now where the mass majority of people actually play. And of course, you know, we still have a community in 6v6. It's still playable. Still, you know, it's not like it takes 10 years to find lobbies. Maybe if you're shadow banned or something of that sort. And also, skill-based matchmaking, you know, of course, makes it extremely hard to find games sometimes. But, you know, when it comes to a game being, like, completely dead, zero players, no. But still, when it comes to what Activision prioritizes, and I guess now Microsoft... It's always Warzone. I mean, who knows? Maybe Microsoft will change that up. But I seriously hope in the future, or hopefully right now, you know, we'll see when Sledgehammer comes back from winter break, how they deal with things within the game. But I, I, I just, I really hope that 6v6 gets the love and attention it deserves and it doesn't just dwindle out, you know? Again, I'm not saying this game is in a bad spot and Sledgehammer did a phenomenal job with getting it here before leaving. But, you know, I, I still can't help but worry that Warzone is going to get all the attention, all the meta shifts, all, you know, just all the love that a game really needs to keep the attention of a player base. But, of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed today's video, leave a like. If you hated it, leave a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified for more content just like this. And, last but not least, don't forget you can catch my live streams over on Kick. I usually stream daily, and uh, that usually goes live, like I said, around 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern time. As always, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you all on the next one. Peace out.